action. Um, and I go through phases. So lift and roll your shoulders. Lift your toes and then just set your toes down. This will spread your feet or spread, yes, just balance your, give, your, give you balance for those of us who can, you know, stand upright and balance. And then breathing in, turn the head to the left. Breathing out, turn the head to the right. In to the left. And out to the right. Come back to the centre. Breathing in, raise the right arm. Hold your left thigh with your left hand. And breathing out, just go to the left. Bouncing in and out, it's a natural stretch. Breathing in, come upright, and breathing out, lower your right arm. Breathing in, bend up your left arm. <laughs> Breathe out, just bounce in and out. We're looking slightly, what's that? Because there's a nibbling sound on top of the roof, which is likely to either be a bird or a squirrel. Breathe and come to the centre. But it was one, it's still going on. What on earth is that sound? Lift and roll your shoulders. And then breathe in, raise both arms. Clasp and reverse the palms upwards. Just turn to one side, just bounce in and out slightly. Come to the centre and stretch up. And then breathing out, turn. You can bend the knee in opposite to the direction that you're turning and bounce the other way. And then come to the center and lower the hands. And lift and roll the shoulders. And then sway just very gently from side to side. This is, I believe, in the equinox type calendar. The 21st of September is the first day of autumn. And it's so lovely. I mean, I'm going to be distraught when it comes to autumn and winter. I really don't like the damp and the cold. If I could go away for two or three months of the year, I would do. I'd love it. Absolutely love it. And then just start to slow down. And step to turn to the left, lift your right heel and raise your arms, just looking up or behind you. Release the arms down and turn to the other side. I'm turning to my right, lifting my left heel and just literally stretching out and then coming back down to the centre. And then just make almost a star really stretching out your hands can be high or low and then circle your wrists down and circle your wrists up looking forward or up again that depends on your neck your balance stretch your fingers and then circle down lift and roll the shoulders so bring your right arm across your body and take your left hand and just slide it along. And this stretches out the shoulder and the upper back. That might or might not help, depending where you're low, your back is. Yes. Yeah. And then just release, lift and roll the shoulders and bring the left arm across and take your hand either that way or that way and just slide it along and just again stretch out and then just release and lift and roll your shoulders. Open your arms out and then hug yourself, remembering which arm's on the top. Come chin to chest, slightly bend forward and then just rock from side to side. And then just release. Lift and roll the shoulders, open the arms and then if you can remember which arm was on top, Reverse that and hug. And just go from side to side. And then release. 
if to roll your shoulders. So this will is meant to disperse frustration and irritation. It's a very good way to clear the mind and magnetic field up, back, cross, up, back. If you remember to cross the other way, but it doesn't matter if you don't, up, back, cross, up, back, cross. Back, cross, up, back, cross, back, cross. And make the next one the last one. Up, back, cross. And then just lift and roll your shoulders. And then with your right hand, just push your right hand to the left, lifting your right heel and release back. As then you take your left hand and just push an imaginary ball or something away from you. So you're very gently balancing your pelvis and you're very gently balancing um, the brain hemispheres and you're coordinating your movement with your breath. So it becomes, there are lots of these exercises, you'll find them rooted in the Far Eastern world of medicine. So. Tai Chi and Qigong type movements. And then just release and roll your shoulders. Raise your right hand. It can be stretched or bent at the elbow. And turn your head to the left. And stay here for an in and an out breath. Bring your head back to centre and lower your right arm. And then raise the left arm. Breathe out, turn your head away from the uh, left arm to the right. Stay here for an in and an out breath. When you're ready, bring your head back to the centre and breathing out, lower the left arm. And lift and roll the shoulders back. And then we're going to come to um, bring the hands together and then just circle up, touch palms, come through the centre, bend the knees and come to slide the hands onto the shins, half lift, lengthening from the tailbone to the top of the head, breathing out, bend the knees and bend the elbows. Press the hands on the shins, half lift, and stay here as you breathe out. Press the feet into the ground, soften your knees, and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And raising the hands up, stretch the fingers, breathing out, lower the arms. Lift and roll the shoulders. And once more, breathing in, hands together at the heart centre. Circle the arms up. Stretch. Palms together. Bring the palms through the centre of the body. Soften the knees. The elbows, of course, are bent. Hands onto the shins. Half lift. Lengthening along the tailbone to the top of the head. Breathe out, soften the knees, soften the elbows as you curl in. Breathe in, lengthening. And stay here as you breathe out. Breathe in, soften your knees, press your feet down and roll up, vertebra by vertebra to standing. Hands up to the ceiling, stretch the fingers and lower the hands. And then feet hip width apart as we start this Tai Chi movement of flying. So it is all the joints here. Really good for weight bearing, for your, for all the joints. You can just feel that. And again, you're coordinating the movement with breath. So you're slowing everything down, which slows the nervous system down. And I'm creaking. <laughs> um, and, and just gently lower the hands. Rest the hands on the waist. You're opening your lungs. 
So we need Charlotte here really. Just breathing in and out. And just a couple of times, nothing to do, just enjoy the space that you're creating for your lungs. You tend to stand uh, or align um, well when you're doing this. There's less tendency to slouch. But just checking, release the arms and just press your, what's this, your thighs, your hips. And you'll find if you just press in, you tend to lengthen up here. Just release your hands. And again, just feel that your chest is lifting a fraction. You might want to lift and roll your shoulders, but your shoulders are quite well aligned in this position. And then just turn your head to the left and then to the right. And back to the center. And you're into dasana or perfect alignment. So the advantage of this is that your bones are stacking up correctly and it's less effort for your body to um, support itself through the joints. Bring your hands together and then just come to a seated position and legs out in front of you. I seem to have lots of paraphernalia here, of course, which is making that less easy. And just take the flesh out from under the bottom and just bounce your legs, hands perhaps either side of you. Maybe rub your legs or tap them, just massaging self-care, dry skin brushing, a kind of action. And then just hands lightly either side of you as you toes up to the ceiling and then toes slightly away from you a couple of times, activating the circulation in the entire body. And then start to circle the ankles a few times in one direction. And then circle the ankles a few times in the other direction. Stretch your toes out and release and relax them. And then just waggle your feet from side to side. And then open your toes away from each other in a V and then just bring your big toes and toe joints towards each other, open out and back in. Almost you can tap your big toe joints together and this sets up a vibration in the body all the way to the top of the head. And then just release, bounce your legs once again. Turn the head to the left and turn the head to the right. And again to the left and then to the right. Come to the centre. And then bending one knee and then the other. Come to lying on the mat. Knees are bent. Feet are hip width apart. Just take a moment to settle yourself. Hands might be palms down on the floor, they might be resting on the abdomen. Just let the weight of the body sink to the earth, so now the body is no longer being asked to support you. The weight of the earth is taking a lot of the support. But muscles take quite some time to relax. So just start with your um, attention on the tailbone. And move your tailbone towards the earth so it's like a pelvic tilt. And as you do that, there'll be a little gap that appears underneath your lower tail, underneath your back. And then flatten your back to the ground so as the tailbone slightly lifts. 
If that were a clock, you would be moving towards your six o'clock. And then come back to the centre. And to come to three o'clock, both knees slightly move to the right as you come onto your right bottom bit. And then coming back to the centre. And then your nine o'clock, both knees move slightly to the left. Your right hip might lift slightly. And then come back to the centre. And then just very gently do a couple of pelvic tilts without any focus on the clock, just pelvic tilt. And then just bring your feet slightly wide, perhaps a hip width apart. Your hands can either rest palms down, or they can rest on the abdomen, or they can rest out at either shoulder height or slightly lower than that to an A. And begin to sway both knees from side to side in the same direction. And as you do this, your hip will lift up from the floor, so the hip opposite to the direction of the knees. It's an intuitive, natural um, movement. The wider you have your feet, the more your knees will fall to the centre as you sway. So it's an entirely your choice what you'd like to do. It's quite a releasing movement. You're massaging across the upper um, sacral area and the lower back on your bottom. And you might like to start to bring your head into the movement. So classically, you might turn your head away from the direction of the knees. But really, whatever way you turn your head is fine. And again, you just choose which way you want to go. The actual, um, what we're doing is also classified in yoga as a very slight rotation of the spine. But because the spine is so well supported, um, it's minimal and what any rotation of the spine realigns the muscles because we can tense on one side or the other. I think we all do it. The muscles on the Often, if you're right-handed, everything tenses on the right side, so everything gets slightly compressed. And so this is a very nice way to unravel or start to release some of that tension. And then very gently think about coming to slowing the movement down. And then come to the center. Make any adjustments with your feet or your hands that you feel that you naturally might want to do. And then very gently, knees are still bent, feet are hip width apart. Raise both arms, bent at the elbows back the head, and just let the backs of the hands rest on the ground behind you. You can bend your elbows as much as you like. Your lower back might lift off the ground, a little gap there. And you're, you can feel the stretch under your arms. So this focuses on the upper lymphatic system. For anyone who's had surgery under the arms, sometimes this pulls. So then bend your arms as much as you need to, to just release that pull. And you'll notice that your chin tends to come to your chest. So this is activating something called the vagus nerve. It's a bundle of nerves, very far-reaching and implicated in the nervous system. So this is anti-inflammatory and deactivating the um, inflame response. So it's, it's calming for the nervous system. And you might like to take one wrist with one hand and just slightly lengthen um, the arm and just um, 
pull the wrist a few millimeters towards the center of your head, above your head, or to one side. And then just release and take the other arm with your um, wrist of your other arm. And just slightly stretch the um, wrist to the other side. And you'll feel the pull down your ribs, your intercostal muscles. And then release. And then breathing out, lower the arms back down alongside you. And again, make any adjustments to your feet as you hug the left knee into the chest. And still holding your left knee in towards you, start to trace a figure of eight with your left knee. And that can be vertical or horizontal. So it's just very gently moving the um, top of the, the thigh bone in the hip socket and the movement will be minimal. And then just circle the knee and see if you prefer the circle or the eight. Circling one way and then circling the other way. And then hug the left knee into the chest and just then release it as you still hold it to arm's length. Hugging the knee into the chest and then just release to arm's length. And just repeat this a few times in your own breath pattern. So we're doing a very classic Apanasana movement, which works on the lower apana energy that can get very stuck when we're stressed. It's also brilliant for the lower back. And often in yoga, if you work one side at a time, you get a greater benefit because you get greater focus on that side. And you can start to feel the pulsing of the blood almost all through the hip and the lower spine area as you're pulsing and massaging across the lower back. And then very gently when you're ready, release the left foot to the floor. You might like to support under the left leg. Just very gently sway both knees a couple of times from side to side. And then very gently come to bring your focus to the right side and hug the right knee into the chest. And again, you can think about a choice here, either to do the horizontal or vertical figure of eight with your knee. Or if you find, found that you preferred the circles, then just go straight to the circles. But you're moving the thigh in the hip socket. When we walk or play sport, the movement tends to be backwards and forwards, but it doesn't necessarily include the rotational element. If you are going to um, move to the circles, then move to the circles, but just enjoy the movement. So this has a focus and encourages on the rotational parts of, the, of this movement. And it's where we don't fully use a joint, but toxins can build up and you can get a build up of calcium deposits and stiffness particularly in the hips and shoulders as well, actually. And then just come to stillness as you hug the right knee in. And still holding the knee, let the knee travel to arm's length. 
breathing out, and then release, you would do hugging the knee to the chest. And then release into arm's length. And just carry on a few times in your own breath length. length. Again, not always, but often, if we're right-handed, then stiffness, um, because we use the right side, right hand more, everything emanates from the right. Um, we, there tends to be stiffness on the right a little bit more, but it doesn't always follow, but quite often it can do. So all the while, we're allowing the back to start to release, all those muscles in the lower back can start to release out. You're still coordinating the movement with the breath, so the nervous system is still having, um, uh, being calmed down. And then hug the right knee into the chest and bring the left knee up to join it so both knees are hugging into the chest. Depending on your how you are, you might like your knees a little bit further apart. It's how you're comfortable. Hug both knees into the chest. And you might really hug them in and you'll go further up your lower back and let both knees drift away to arm's length. Hug both knees into the chest. And let both knees drift away. And hug both knees into the chest. Let both knees drift away. And hug both knees into the chest. Let both knees drift away. And just a couple of times in your own breath pattern, really just almost easing out the lower back. And then just dropping your hands to underneath your thighs. You might like to clasp your hands and very gently raise the soles of the feet to the ceiling. You can still keep a bend in your knees. I'm clasping my hands just above the knees and just sway slightly from side to side in a very gentle inversion. Imagine that you're like seaweed, swaying very gently, going with the flow, with the tide and thinking of the tide, which is very influenced by the moon. I have a feeling that it might be coming up to full moon. So the influence of the moon's pull on, on gravity on our fluid levels is quite considerable. And then just very gently bend the knees, hug the knees one more time into the chest. And then we're going to roll to the side and however you come up to a seated position, come gently to a seated position. If you can manage cross leg, that's absolutely lovely. If you can't manage cross leg, then don't worry too much. And just wherever you are, just sitting up and breathing out, grounding chin to chest. Sitting up, so this is a cat cow rounding chin to chest. Sitting up and rounding chin to chest. Again, we're carrying on with the coordination of the breath, with movement coordination, calming to the nervous system as we come forward, stretching out the back of the neck. As you breathe forward, coming slightly forward, the ribs at the back are expanding, stretching out the back. And apparently 60% of our breath comes from the back of the lung tissue, which I never quite realized. And then just. 
And then coming to seated, just circle a few times in one direction. Your circles can be tiny, but if you feel have a wild desire to make big circles, then that's fine. And then very gently circling in the other direction. You've been sitting for a little bit with your knees crossed, so just um, bend your knees up, support them, and stretch your legs out along the floor. And once more, just bounce your knees. And cross, hands either side, cross your right ankle over your left. So, Pat, even though um, Nick can't particularly necessarily balance, the mere action of crossing either your ankles and or your wrists gives the brain the signal to cross the neural pathways linking the left and the right brain hemispheres, all of which comes to balance. And although you can't necessarily physically, or he can't physically balance, the brain's picking up the same message for balancing everything. So that's just a useful thing to remember. So even if you're sitting watching television, you can still cross your wrists and you can cross your ankles. We're just going to take the left hand to the right thigh, breathe in, lengthen, and breathe out, just turning to the right. Breathing in, lengthening the body, and as you turn, the head almost is the last thing to turn and the least important in that the turn is just where you can make it. And stay here here for an in and an out breath. Come back to the centre and cross your right ankle from your left. Just slide your hands forward to your shins. Again, the chin to the chest is very helpful to calm the nervous system down, but not too far forward. Taking an in and an out breath and just feel the breath being concentrated to the back of the body, the back of the ribs. And then as you slide your hands up to place each hand either side of you, cross your left ankle over your right. You can just bring your right hand to the outside of the left thigh, left hand behind you as you breathe in and breathing out, turn to the left. You don't have to turn a lot as you breathe in length in your body, and the head is the last thing to turn. So for driving and turning, as you look to assess what's coming behind you, I know we don't do that very often, this is very helpful for that movement. Staying here for an in and an out breath. And then very gently coming back to the centre, I'm crossing the left ankle from the right. And then sliding the hands down to the shins. Or resting the hands wherever you feel that you're able to. And we're just going to tone the internal system. So as you're here, breathe out. Tummy comes in, perineum goes, engages up slightly. And hold the breath out for as long as you are comfortably able to do so. And then when you want to breathe in, just release all the muscles and breathe in, just coming up slightly with your head. And then sliding your hands down, slightly your shins, breathing out, tummy in. Perineum engages slightly, breathe out and hold the breath out for a moment or two. And then release and come back up again. And then we're going to come to soles of the feet together. So that's Badik and Asana. I don't know if Sue wants to have any thought for the day. Um, no. Can you introduce something and I'll say what it is? I don't know what you Just a really nice general massage to feel. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, it was a good one. It's around the um, ankle bones, which is the lower lymphatic system. So lovely. if you just sort of do a pressing motion and move your thumb around like that, each side, round there. Oh, 
Do you know, I keep forget to do the pressing motion. You know, you need to... Yes. It's, it's called thumb walking. What you do is you push your thumb in and you move it along as it's down. Okay. Can you so see that? I can't see that. Yeah. Can you see? Are you kind of okay with that? Yes, yes I think so, yes. Yes. So you push your thumb down and move it along and then just, it's like in a sort of walk, sort of scissor mo motion, up and down, but... As you're moving it up and down, push it along and round, so you, it's going quite deep without taking it off. It's, it takes a while to get used to it, but that's the best way to, to massage. So you could just go round the ankle bone in one direction and then just gently round in the other direction. That's very soothing. Yes, it's nice, isn't it? And that's, yeah, that's the lower lymphatic system. And then your upper lymph lymphatic, lymphatic lymphatic system is down between each toe where the bones go. So you go down about an inch. Yeah. And again, it's easy to do with your, your forefinger on there. So it's on the top of the foot. On now. the top of the foot, in between the toes, down between the toes, the bones between the toes, you go down about an inch. So you can move up and down there, down each one. And that's the that corresponds with the upper lymphatic system. So the lower one is around the ankles and the upper one is down between the toes. It's so lovely. it just boosts immune boosting. Then. Yes. Yeah. I think we should be immune boosting as we're coming into autumn mm -hmm. because yeah. it's, um, you know, yes, quite, quite good. And also the cool and warm, I know it's lovely today, but it doesn't always stay lovely. It's yeah. cool and damp. Yeah. The other thing with the lower lymphatic system, it's around the outside of the ankle bone as well, but that's just a bit harder to get to. You have to sort of sit in a bit of a V. It's easy when you're doing it on someone else because you can do that. So it's, it's around the ankle bone, each side there as well. So if you think about it, when you've got puffy ankles, how it oh, corresponds, yes. you see puffy ankles is to do with the lymphatic system with the body holding on to water, so you've got water retention, so that can get properly around that area. So if you think about it, that ties in with, with that. Yes. You know, people can get puffy ankles, mm -hmm. often the lymphatic system is not clearing Stop. something in the body. Very Phil, well. Phil's mother's got the drip, the puffy yes. ankles. So she would, it would help with her, just somebody, or somebody has to do it, she can't reach her ankles. But I don't know that you'd want to volunteer, yeah. but uh, well, no. maybe Phil would like to do it. No, no. <laughs> probably not. I'm probably going to be recording that. It's the most inappropriate thing ever. I'm sorry. We are in the middle of it. I've said to Phil he needs to have a conversation with his mother um, because things like Christmas, we've suddenly realised she's wearing incontinence pads. Oh, and our downstairs loo is not suitable for disabled access. Um, yeah. And she can't go upstairs. And Phil is absolutely doing everything possible to avoid the conversation, uh, which I do understand. Um, yeah, but she, well, she won't be able to come, will she? She won't be able to come. You no, know, because you're not... No. And I know, but can you imagine World War... Not World War Three. can you imagine the mental... Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, so this is going to be an interesting it's conversation. It's he won't have a conversation. He won't mention... No, that's men for you, isn't it? We'll not mention a conference pass to her, but... <laughs> I'm not sure it's Nick like particularly likes talking about me either. <laughs> no, no, no. And I did say, well, how? What would you be prepared to do for your mother? And it, it, no, it, that's, no, no, no. That's 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 not right for both sides. Not right for both of them. No, to have to do that. It's, no, it, it, it's hard if you're a daughter. Yes, as a son. No, no, no. I'm no. oh, sorry. No, I know. I know. Telling me he's got that off there. Yes, so um, I am going to invite you to um, do a couple of things. Um, um, right on, to, to Sorry about the noise. Uh, come to um, sitting how you want to. I know you're not keen. Okay. Yeah, I'm all right. Not too so we're going to do a very minimal Tibetan breath. And then I did want to talk about a particular mudra. Um, so the Tibetan breath. Breathe in through both nostrils as you raise your left hand. Turn the palm outwards. Lock your left nostril and breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through the right nostril. And breathe out through both nostrils as you lower your left hand. 
Breathe in through both nostrils as you raise your right hand, turn the palm outwards and block your right nostril. Breathe out through the left. Breathe in through the left. Breathe out through both nostrils as you lower your right hand. Breathe in through both nostrils as you raise your left hand, block the left nostril. Breathe out through the right. Breathe in through the right. Breathe out through both nostrils, lowering your left hand. Breathe in through both nostrils, raising your right hand, blocking the right nostril. Breathe out through the left. Breathe in through the left. Breathe out through both nostrils, lowering your right hand. And then breathe in through both nostrils, sitting up, and breathe out through both nostrils, just nod forward or touch your fingers to the floor to support you as you nod forward. And then walk your hands back up again. So I just wanted to show, we're going to come to relax, but I just wanted to show you this mudra and then read you what the advantages are. So um, it is, you're starting just which hand it is. Have your right palm up, your left palm on top, and just, I don't know if you can see, I'm pulling the fingers just gently. So that's the mudra, it's terribly simple. Come to lying on the floor, either knees bent or uh, um, and feet hip width apart and knees touching in constructive rest, or come just to lying completely on the floor in Shavasana, with your hands just gently hooked like that, right palm up, left palm just touching. And while you're relaxing, I'm going to read you what this does. So it's a remover of obstacles. And this gesture builds self-confidence and courage. It instills you in the courage and willpower to face difficult situations and fosters compassion and respect for other people. This particular um, mudra, which is a sealing in of energy, is called Ganesh, Ganesha mudra. It has a powerful effect on the veins and bronchial tubes, encouraging them to open. Ganesha is a favourite Indian deity with many admirers in the West, representing the energy that removes problems that get in your way. Um, We've done how to practice, and it's quite good to um, keep your hands at waist level or rest them in your lap. Hold for as long as feels comfortable without moving, and you can do it during difficult meetings or when standing on a crowded train. And bringing the fingers together brings all the five elements together as the palms press against each other and your mind joins them to give strength and determination to body and mind. And to make this a more dynamic practice, if you want to, whilst holding the fingers, you can breathe out and pull your fingers in the opposite direction so that there's a resistance and release. And if you do that, you can do that six times. And then after you've done that, if you want to reverse it, you would have a left hand on top and the right palm down the opposite way. So while you're relaxing, and I'll now relax with you, you do that, either static or dynamic, mudras work on the energy, the magnetic field of us. So we're, in order for our nerves to kind of work our muscles there has to be an electrical pulse or a message and that message um, is is electric it's what doctors sent uh, in the 1800s were desperate to experiment on so as to what gave us our life force and our vitality and hence the um you know putting electric um, flow through people to try and bring the life to them. And so we've got electricity coming that you can't see coming out of our fingers. 
and it just escapes to the ether. There's also warmth that escapes to the ether, but there's, there's on our body, but there's the electricity aspect. And if you join the fingers together, the electricity is believed to recirculate within the body and can uh, use in certain ways, can have quite a powerful effect. And there are mudras for everything. They're very unobtrusive um, movements, often hand gestures, but there are body mudras. So another mudra, for instance, is when you bring your chin to your chest, you're sealing energy into the upper level of the body and strengthening the flow of, of blood into the um, head and because you're extending the back of the neck. And so it allows easier flow of blood, but that happens to calm the nervous system. So just relax for a few breaths. Nothing for you to do. Just let the effects of the practice have a moment or two to settle in the system. We've looked at the body and the mind as we always do in yoga, but it doesn't necessarily flag that up. The nervous system calmed down. We've moved in a number of different directions. But again, we're not necessarily aware of that. Extension is standing straight, extending the spine. Rotation as we move from side to side and twisted round. And forward bend, of course. We've done a lateral extension, and our inversion has been holding our legs up. So, again, very gentle. So, the spine has been moved in a number of directions, and back bend is defined by lifting the chest. So, even in Artadasana, we were lifting the chest, which lifts everything up and give space for the blood to flow in the body. Think of movement for health like a cat or a dog. We don't need to move that much. In fact, moving too much and vigorously is detrimental to the health because it creates a burn or an aggression. Um, it does make you tired, but it doesn't necessarily help your, your muscles if it's too aggressive. The very gentle movement, like a cat or a dog stretching out, does wonders for keeping the body flexible and supple and keeping everything move, moving. And that old adage, use it or lose it, applies as much to the body as it does to the mind and vice versa. But you don't need to do it that much. And just become aware of where you are on the mat. And then take whatever movement works for you to reconnect with where you are. Maybe hug your knees into your chest. Maybe just rock from side to side. And we're just going to come to the side and come once more, taking our time to a seated position. A cross leg seated position. And just bring the hands to the chest and take a moment to have a thought for the day. It can be for yourself or it can be for someone close to you. And just have that thought for a couple of times. And then let the thought go. The intention for your day has been set. And a slightly different visualisation is to imagine yourself behind um, a wall. It can be a wall of anything of your choice. And in th through that wall, anything positive can flow in, but nothing negative can come in. So you, you, you let go of everything um, that you want to let go of, but only positive things. So you're protected and surrounded for the day for just positive things to come in. And then just simply lower your chin to your chest once more, taking a bow now for yourself. So have a very lovely day ahead. Thank you for joining me. And enjoy all this sunshine. <laughs>